All right, class, in this section, we're going to take a look at radical expressions and graphs. So to begin, we're going to simplify higher roots of radical expressions. To do that, we need to look at this number on the outside and realize that it's really asking the question of there's something to this power that equals this number on the inside. So there's something that can, we can raise to the third power that equals 64. And so we're looking for what's called a cube. And this is the cube root. And so we're looking for the cube, the thing that we can raise to the third power called the cube that is equal to 64. And I have a note off the top of my head is four. Four cubed is 64. Uh, there's a common list of cubes that you'd like to use. And so we should have one, two, three, four, five, at least those ones cubed, and just kind of recognize that one cubed would be one, two cubed would be eight, three cubed would be 27, four cubed is going to be 64, and five cubed is equal to 125. <clears throat> and those will help us on these subsequent problems. It'll also help us to know what things would be raised to the fifth power and the fourth, um, some common small numbers raised to higher power. So in particular, like one to the fourth and one to the fifth are all one. But then two to the four is 16. That's a common one that we use as the twos and two to the fifth is 32. So I'm getting ready to build this list that I can see here, the 16 and the 32 and this 16 over here are most likely going to be coming from my twos. So we're going to get used to those in just a minute here. Now, the next one here, you see this is a fourth root of 16. So we're, we're trying to ask the question, what to the fourth power is 16? And so looking at this number over here, I see that I came up with two to the fourth is 16. So that was the number we're looking for. The answer to the first one was four, by the way. The answer to the second one is two. We're asking what to the third power was 64. That was four. What to the fourth power is 16, and that's 2. And over here, we're looking for what to the fifth power is 32. Well, that's also going to be 2, because 2 to the fifth power is 32. Now, when we have a quotient, what we're looking for is separation of the top and the bottom. We can separate this to be the cube root of 8 over the cube root of 27. And then we can think about what number raised to the third power is eight. That's the answer to the question. So what cubed is eight? And that's two, two cubed is eight. And what cubed is 37? So we're answering those questions separately. And what we'll find is that two over three is what we can cube to be eight over 27. So the cube root of 827 is two thirds. So you're saying two thirds to the third power would give me 827. So we're working the other way, the cube root of 827 is two thirds. And then here we have 0. 0.0016. When you're working with a decimal, we're asking what to the fourth power gives me this 0. 0.0016, we know that we're going to be multiplying something by itself four times. So as you multiply the decimals, so if I multiplied a uh, 2, 0.2, four times, the decimal is going to move four places. So what I focus on is the 16, ignoring the decimal for a moment, and think about just with 16, what's the fourth root of 16? And that would be 2 because 2 to the fourth is 16. And so what I do is I think about how do I move that decimal so that it goes one, two, three, four places. And then we just need to put it right there. So that way, when I multiply 0.2 by itself four times, that decimal will slide to the left four times. As we compare even versus odd roots, what we need to be concerned about is that even roots can only be taken of positive values zero or positive values. So we could say uh, whole numbers, if you will. So that is zero or positive. 
values inside of even roots. And what I'm talking about is the index has to be even. On these roots down below, you see that the indexes are all threes, and those are just odd. It could be any odd value, but in this case, it's three. And so what we're looking for here is that even have to have whole or positive roots because we can't take the square root of a negative. We'll learn later that this is called I or imaginary. Odd roots, we can take the root of any number. And so odds with the negative, if you have a negative one, it would just turn out to be negative one because you can take uh, the cube root of negative one and we're just asking what times itself three times is negative one, just like the previous slide. And what we have is negative one times itself three times turns out to be negative one times negative one times negative one. What happens is, is the negative times a negative of the first two would turn out to be a positive one times another negative one would give you indeed another negative one result. So the odd root of any number, odd index root of any number works. Doesn't have to be just positive or <clears throat> zero. So here, the square root of 64, I believe we would be able to plug in our calculator, just know the answer is eight. And as soon as you get a negative, square root of 64, we can't do it. Uh, it's technically undefined, but what we, or it, what it is is imaginary. What we can do is we can pull out the negative as an I and then have the square root of 64 continue and turn that into I times eight, which is best written as eight I. So anytime there's a imaginary root or a, sorry, a square root of a negative, you would pull out an I and that represents up top, the square root of negative one is an I value. So anytime you have a negative inside the radical, you would have to pull out imaginary. Technically, this doesn't exist. That's just eight imaginaries. It's not real. So if you have the opportunity or option to put in imaginary, you would pull out the I and do that. Otherwise, we would say that this uh, is undefined or uh, not real. Moving on. If we have a negative on the outside, it's perfectly acceptable to do our square root because we can still take our previous first answer of eight and just times it by negative. Notice it's the square root of 64, that is eight. And then you just bring the negative sign down, it's just negative eight. There's nothing wrong with this, it's perfectly real, it's just a negative value at the end because you're multiplying by a negative at the end. Then continuing, <clears throat> you see that we have a negative on the inside here. I have com uh, a common mistake for my students is they think the negative times the negative makes a positive. Uh, that does not work here because the square root has to be done performed first with order of operations. PEMDAS says you got to do the inside of this first before multiplying by the outside. So what has to happen is you'd actually pull out an I, an imaginary, and then get the square root of 64 with a negative sign coming down. Now, again, I th believe the answer for this section is undefined or not real. Um, <clears throat> the the actual imaginary moving forward, you pull out the I and then you take the square root of 64 is eight. And then you have the I here and the negative sign and then you just rewrite that to be negative eight I. Now, I believe undefined is the result that we should be getting, but negative eight I is where we're going eventually. Continuing down here with this odd roots, all it is now is just thinking about what to the third power is 64. And so the number there is four, as we did previously. And so on the previous slide, so four is the result of this. The cube root of 64 is four because the four cubed gives you 64. In the next example, you have the negative sign there. The only thing that changes is the negative comes out. Notice how this is an odd root. And as I mentioned above, anytime you have something to the third power or an odd power, you can just pull the negative out. You don't have to have this imaginary process from before we pull out the I to deal with it. So any odd root, the negative sign just comes out. Any even root, you have imaginary. So continuing, this negative sign actually comes down and the cube root of 64 is four, so it's negative four. And then right here, 
the cube root of this negative will spit out a negative 4, but you still have this negative on the outside that needs to come down. So this is basically negative 1 times negative 4, and so this is a positive 4 final result. So the PEMDAS says you do the cube root of the negative 64 to get negative 4, and then you bring that negative down on the outside to multiply to have a positive final result.